magnesium is involved in over 300 reactions in our bodies. Studies show that up to 80% of people don't get enough of this vital mineral. But here's the thing that worries me most. While magnesium can be incredibly beneficial, taking it incorrectly can actually be dangerous. After reviewing many medical studies, I've seen too many people make preventable mistakes with magnesium. They're either taking magnesium when they shouldn't, or they're combining it with medications that create dangerous interactions, mistakes that can have serious consequences. I'm talking about serious risks like kidney problems, breathing difficulties, and even heart complications. That's why today I'm going to give you everything you need to know about magnesium supplements, the good, the bad, and most importantly, how to use them safely. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly who should take magnesium, who shouldn't, how much to take, and what to watch out for. So, let's dive in. Let's start with the first crucial question. Do you actually need magnesium supplements? Many people are taking magnesium without knowing if they really need it. Here are the clear signs that your body is crying out for more magnesium. The first major sign is muscle problems. Have you ever been lying in bed just about to fall asleep when suddenly your calf muscle seizes up in the most painful cramp? Or maybe your eyelid won't stop twitching no matter what you do. These could be signs that your body is crying out for magnesium. Magnesium acts like a natural calming agent for your nerves. When you don't have enough, your nerves become overexcited. Think of them like live electrical wires that can't turn off. This leads to muscle cramps, twitching, numbness, and that tingling sensation in your hands and feet. But it's not just about cramping. Have you noticed that your legs feel weak when you walk, or that you can't seem to find the strength you used to have? Magnesium is essential for energy production in your muscles. Without it, your muscles literally can't access the energy they need to work properly. The second major sign is stress and emotional problems. Here's something that might surprise you. Stress doesn't just affect your mind, it actually depletes your body's magnesium stores. And this creates a vicious cycle that many people don't realize they're stuck in. When you're stressed, your body goes into what we call fight or flight mode. Your sympathetic nervous system kicks into overdrive and your body starts demanding more magnesium to cope. At the same time, stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline actually make your kidneys dump magnesium through your urine. So stress uses up your magnesium and low magnesium makes you more stressed. It's like being caught in quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. If you find yourself feeling anxious, irritable, or lying awake at night with your mind racing, magnesium might be the missing piece of your puzzle. The third group that needs magnesium is older adults. As we age, our digestive system doesn't work as efficiently as it used to. Your stomach produces less acid, which means the magnesium in your food doesn't dissolve properly. Your intestines also become less efficient at absorbing nutrients, so even if magnesium does dissolve, less of it makes it into your bloodstream. On top of that, many older adults eat less of the magnesium-rich foods like leafy greens, whole grains, and nuts, either because they're harder to chew and digest or simply because their appetite is decreased. This double hit of poor absorption and reduced intake makes magnesium deficiency extremely common in people over 60. If you have digestive problems like acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome, or inflammatory bowel disease, you're also at high risk for magnesium deficiency because these conditions interfere with your body's ability to absorb nutrients properly. The fourth group includes people taking certain common medications. If you're taking diuretics, those water pills used to treat high blood pressure and heart problems, you need to pay special attention to magnesium. These medications work by making you urinate more, but they don't just remove excess water, they flush out magnesium along with it, potentially leaving you deficient. The same goes for acid-blocking medications called proton pump inhibitors. If you're taking drugs like omeprazole or esomeprazole for heartburn or ulcers, you're reducing the stomach acid needed to properly absorb magnesium. 
Over time, this can lead to deficiency even if you're eating magnesium-rich foods. The fifth group that often needs extra magnesium is people with diabetes. Here's what happens. When your blood sugar is high, your kidneys work overtime to remove the excess glucose through your urine. Unfortunately, magnesium gets swept out along with the sugar. Making matters worse, when you take insulin, it doesn't just move sugar into your cells, it pulls magnesium in too. This can temporarily lower your magnesium levels in your blood. Since magnesium is crucial for insulin to work properly, a deficiency can make your blood sugar control even worse, creating another vicious cycle. However, if you have diabetic kidney disease, you need to be extra careful. Damaged kidneys can't remove excess magnesium efficiently, so supplementing could be dangerous. Always check with your doctor first. If you drink alcohol regularly, you also need more magnesium. Alcohol interferes with magnesium's absorption in your intestines and increases how much you lose through urination. Even moderate drinking can gradually deplete your magnesium stores over time. People who exercise intensively or work in hot environments also lose significant amounts of magnesium through sweat. If you're a construction worker, athlete, or someone who sweats heavily on a regular basis, you're literally losing magnesium through your skin. Finally, if you have high blood pressure, magnesium supplementation might help. Magnesium works like a natural muscle relaxer for your blood vessels. When your arteries and veins are more relaxed, blood can flow more easily, reducing the pressure on your cardiovascular system. For the most people living in industrialized countries, there's another hidden reason to consider magnesium supplements. Modern farming has depleted the magnesium content in our soil, which means the foods we eat today contain significantly less magnesium than the same foods contained 50 years ago. If your diet doesn't regularly include dark leafy greens, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and beans, you're probably not getting enough magnesium from food alone. For the average person, taking 100 to 200 milligrams of magnesium daily is generally safe and beneficial. If you have symptoms of deficiency, you might need more, but don't exceed 350 mg per day from supplements unless you're working with a healthcare provider. Now let's talk about the forms of magnesium that actually work. Not all magnesium supplements are created equal. Magnesium glycinate and magnesium malate are highly absorbable forms that are gentle on your stomach. Avoid magnesium oxide unless you're specifically trying to relieve constipation. It's poorly absorbed and acts more like a laxative than a nutritional supplement. Now, let's talk about who should not take magnesium. There are people who should never take magnesium supplements. The first group that must avoid magnesium supplements is people with kidney problems. Your kidneys are responsible for removing excess magnesium from your body. If your kidneys aren't working properly, magnesium can build up to toxic levels in your bloodstream, a condition called hypermagnesemia. Early signs of magnesium toxicity include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. But as levels continue to rise, you might experience muscle weakness, low blood pressure, difficulty breathing, and irregular heartbeat. In severe cases, magnesium toxicity can cause your heart to stop beating entirely. Let me tell you about what happened to Margaret, a 72-year-old woman with mild kidney disease. She had been struggling with constipation and read online that magnesium could help. What she didn't realize was that her kidneys couldn't properly clear the magnesium from her system. After just five days of taking the supplement, she started feeling nauseated and unusually tired. She thought she was coming down with the flu, but when her daughter insisted on taking her to the doctor, blood tests revealed dangerously high magnesium levels. Margaret had to be hospitalized to flush the excess magnesium from her system. If you have any degree of kidney disease or kidney failure, do not take magnesium supplements without direct medical supervision. The second group is people with very low blood pressure. Since magnesium relaxes blood vessels and naturally lowers blood pressure, those who already have hypotension may see their blood pressure drop to dangerously low levels. This can trigger dizziness, fainting, or falls, 
a serious risk for older adults in particular. Here's what happened to Robert. He was a 69-year-old retiree whose blood pressure was already on the low side at around 165. He started taking magnesium after hearing it was good for muscle cramps. On his third day, he got up from his morning coffee and immediately felt the room spinning. He grabbed onto the kitchen counter just in time to prevent a fall. His wife took his blood pressure and it had dropped to 85 over 55, dangerously low. When they called his doctor and mentioned the new magnesium supplement, the doctor immediately told him to stop taking it. Within two days, Robert's blood pressure returned to normal and the dizzy spells disappeared. The third group includes people with slow heart rate or heart rhythm disorders. If you have conditions like bradycardia or something called heart block, magnesium supplements could make them worse. Magnesium can further slow the electrical signals in your heart, potentially leading to severe arrhythmias or even cardiac arrest in extreme cases. Think about what happened to Frank, a 75-year-old man who already had a naturally slow heart rate of about 55 beats per minute. His doctor was monitoring this, but it wasn't severe enough to require treatment. Frank decided to start taking magnesium for better sleep after reading about its benefits. Within a week, he noticed he felt unusually weak during his daily walks. When he went for his regular checkup, his doctor found his heart rate had dropped to just 42 beats per minute. The magnesium was making his already slow heart even slower. His doctor immediately discontinued the supplement, and Frank's heart rate gradually returned to his baseline. The fourth group includes people taking certain medications. Magnesium can strongly interact with a number of drugs. Antibiotics, tetracyclines, fluoroquinolones, magnesium binds to them in the stomach, blocking absorption and reducing effectiveness. Always separate doses by at least two hours. Here's a perfect example. Linda was prescribed antibiotics for a urinary tract infection. She had been taking magnesium with her breakfast every morning for months. What she didn't realize was that the magnesium was preventing her antibiotic from being absorbed properly. After a full course of antibiotics, her infection wasn't clearing up. Her pharmacist asked about all her supplements and immediately spotted the problem. Muscle relaxants. Since magnesium has muscle relaxing effects on its own, combining the two can dangerously lower both blood pressure and heart rate. Cardiac glycosides used for heart failure. These drugs, like digoxin, help the heart pump more strongly and control its rhythm. But if you take magnesium together with them, magnesium can change how the drug is absorbed and used in your body. This may lower the drug's effect or make its action unpredictable, which can reduce the safety and even increase the risk of heart rhythm problems. Take the case of Dorothy an 81-year-old woman on digoxin for her heart condition. Her levels were carefully monitored and stable for years. When she added a magnesium supplement for leg cramps, her next blood test showed her digoxin levels had become unpredictable. Some days they were too low, other days too high. Her cardiologist had to spend weeks readjusting her medication until they realized the magnesium was the culprit. Once they coordinated the timing of both supplements properly, her heart medication became stable again. Now it's time to talk about the critical rules for taking magnesium safely and effectively. First, be careful about combining magnesium with high-dose vitamin D supplements. While magnesium is necessary for vitamin D to work properly in your body, taking large amounts of vitamin D, more than 4,000 I use daily, can actually deplete your magnesium stores. If you're taking high-dose vitamin D, make sure you're getting adequate magnesium, but don't assume that more is always better. Second, understand that blood tests can be misleading when it comes to magnesium. Only about 1% of your body's magnesium circulates in your blood. The rest is stored in your bones, muscles, and cells where blood tests can't detect it. Your body works hard to keep blood magnesium levels stable, even if you're deficient everywhere else. This means you could have normal blood magnesium levels, but still be deficient where it counts. Instead of relying solely on blood tests, 
Pay attention to symptoms like muscle twitching, weakness, numbness and tingling in your hands and feet, heart palpitations, anxiety, poor sleep and fatigue. Third, pay attention to the balance between calcium and magnesium. If you're taking calcium supplements but no magnesium, you might be setting yourself up for problems. Without adequate magnesium, excess calcium can deposit in the wrong places, potentially contributing to kidney stones and hardening of the arteries. A good general ratio is about two parts calcium to one part magnesium. Fourth, be mindful of your caffeine and alcohol intake. Both substances increase magnesium loss through your kidneys. If you're a regular coffee drinker or enjoy alcoholic beverages, you need to be more consistent with magnesium supplementation to counteract these losses. Fifth, don't take large doses of magnesium on an empty stomach. This is a recipe for digestive upset, including diarrhea, stomach cramps, and nausea. Instead, split your dose throughout the day and take it with meals. This not only reduces side effects, but actually improves absorption. Here's the proper way to start magnesium supplementation. Begin with a low dose, around 100 mg daily, and take it with dinner. This allows you to gauge how your body responds without overwhelming your digestive system. If you tolerate this well, after a week, you can gradually increase to 200 mg daily, splitting it between morning and evening doses. Choose magnesium glycinate or magnesium malate for the best absorption and fewest side effects. Take each dose with food that contains some healthy fats, as this can improve absorption. Avoid taking magnesium with high-fiber meals or drinks, as fiber can interfere with absorption. Remember that magnesium supplementation is most effective when combined with a healthy overall lifestyle. No supplement can overcome a diet full of processed foods, excessive sugar, and chronic stress. Think of magnesium as one important piece of your health puzzle, not a magic bullet that fixes everything. Now, it's your turn. Have you experienced any of the signs of magnesium deficiency I discussed? Or do you have concerns about whether magnesium supplementation is right for your situation? Share your questions and experiences in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you understand magnesium better and avoid potentially serious mistakes, please hit the like button, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to Better Life. We're committed to providing you with science-based health information that's practical, safe, and easy to understand.